Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The year is 1935. I don't know if there's very many folks here who are around at that point in time, but think back to 1935. The years of depression which began in 1929 have continued with unemployment hovering around at 21%. War clouds were gathering in Europe as Germany rearmed and passed the Nuremberg Laws, stripping Jews of their civil rights. And in a blatant act of aggression, Mussolini's Italy attacked Ethiopia, even using chemical weapons against that defenseless nation. The Gallup poll was introduced that same year, and a reformed drinker named Bill Wilson formed a group to be known as Alcoholics Anonymous. For the first time also, a completely synthetic fiber known as nylon was produced by a DuPont chemist. This was also the year of the birth of swing by Benny Goodman, and the world was ready to boogie. And in the Middle East, the nation once known as Persia became what is known as Iran. In 1935, the average cost of a new house is only $3,450. Boy, haven't things changed? And a new car was only $625. Of course, the average wage per year was only $1,600, so you had to save a little bit still. And I'm glad everybody's sitting down because a gallon of gas was only 10 cents, and a loaf of bread was only 8 cents. Again, how things have changed. If you were one of the cool kids, you shocked your parents and your elders by listening to tunes such as Benny Goodman's Blue Moon, Fred Astaire's Cheek to Cheek, or Cab Calloway's Racy, Keep That Heidi High in Your Soul. And in that same year, in that very same year, 1935, in the basement of Bethel Baptist Church in Gresham, Oregon, a small group of confessional Lutherans organized what would become the Congregation of Redeemer Lutheran Church. Well, even though the world of today is rocked with chaos and disaster, revolution and financial catastrophe, wars and famines, nothing much has really changed except for the names and the locations. Men still commit all kinds of evil under the sun and in the eyes of God in heaven. The devil still rages about looking for mortal men to tempt and snare, and the unbeliever still throws his hands up to the sky and cries out in despair, Truly, just as Ecclesiasticus wrote, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new? It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. Indeed, what was once old becomes new, and that which was new becomes decrepit and cast off, like platform shoes and narrow jackets, bell bottoms and mini skirts. Everything comes back around in some form or another. And some of you who've been around, oh, possibly since the founding of this church, since 1935, can probably attest to the fact that you've seen it all before, and if God will allow you a few more years, you'll probably see it all again. But the trends and fashions of, and currents of world affairs it carried little to no weight to the founding members of Redeemer back in 1935. They knew that there would be hard times and good times. There would be times of lean and times of plenty. They would mourn together and they would rejoice together and they would join together in times of need and celebrate in victories, both large and small. Nobody ever told those first families that things would be easy, that it would be simple, Nobody promised them a rose garden and challenges they would abound over the years, of course. Indeed, if, if someone had told those first members that supporting a church would be a simple affair, some of those old, stubborn Middle Europeans probably would have called them Hans Kopf in the Luft, Hans head in the air, and sent them out the door packing because they don't know what they're talking about. The struggles would range from turning the swampy piece of property that was bought here in 1938 to the place that it is now, to supporting mission work in Africa, to being able to actively support the Lutheran Church in Russia, to the challenges faced by all churches all across this nation in today's economic climate, the struggles they came and they were met through earnest and fervent prayer and the willing spirit of God's people here in this place. 
Well, St. Paul writes to the Thessalonians in today's epistle reading saying, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. For all of these years from 1935 forward, God's people here at Redeemer Lutheran Church have given thanks to our Father for his gracious blessings in all circumstances through that continual prayer and heartfelt praise. And, and the acts of mercy shown here, your acts of mercy, whether serving the infirm and shut in among the congregation or supporting missionary activities in such faraway places as Africa and Russia, it all reflects the love of Christ which is in you and it testifies the peace which only he can give. And through all of those years, through all of those long, long years, that same spirit of forgiveness and warmth which is nurtured here in this body of Christ has made fertile soil in the harsh fields of sinful hearts so that God's word of reconciliation in Christ Jesus may be manifest in the lives of those who enter the doors of this sanctuary here. Do not put out the Spirit's fire, St. Paul tells us. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good and avoid every kind of evil. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit lives and flourishes in this place called Redeemer Lutheran Church. That's not to say this body of believers is a perfect bunch of saints. That's hardly the case. Pastor Lang and I have talked much about this. I'm hardly a saint myself. But sometimes, sometimes those challenges posed have come from within as personalities and, and agendas with good intention created discord. Yet through even the most strident disagreements, through the greatest of discord, through all the challenges of time, the temptations and trials set before you by the world and its prince, you have tested everything. You have tested everything and have withstood them all through the strength of Christ crucified. In and through Christ, you have tested everything and held on to that which is good, acting in the spirit of love and forgiveness, just as your own Lord and Savior forgave each and every one of you. As we noted earlier, not much has really changed since 1935, only the names and the places and, of course, the cost of living. The names and faces here at Redeemer have changed over the years. Some of the original members and even some of the original families are no longer here. But just like those who founded Redeemer so many years ago, you still, you still cling in faith and love to the one thing that is unchangeable, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord here at Redeemer Lutheran Church, I pray that we would continue to seek out and cling to that which is good, to that which is holy, that which is pure and blameless, that Almighty God who began this good work in you in this place may bring it to completion on the last day of our Lord to the glory of his holy name. Now, brothers and sisters, in the spirit of the season of our Lord's advent, it is my earnest and heartfelt prayer that God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. He will do it. Amen.